Kate Blanchett. Catherine Elise Blanchett AC is an Australian actor and producer. Often regarded as one of the best performers of her generation, she is recognized for her versatile work across independent films, blockbusters, and the stage. Wikipedia. Born, May 14, 1969, age 55 years, Ivanhoe, Australia. Spouse, Andrew Upton, M., 1997. Children, Dashiell John Upton, Edith Vivian Patricia Upton, Ignatius Martin Upton, Roman Robert Upton. Height, 1.74 meters. Parents, June Blanchett, Robert Blanchett. Siblings, Genevieve Blanchett, Bob Blanchett. Kate Blanchett was born on May 14, 1969 in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, to June Gamble, an Australian teacher and property developer, and Robert DeWitt Blanchett, Jr., an American advertising executive, originally from Texas. She has an older brother and a younger sister. When she was 10 years old, her 40-year-old father died of a sudden heart attack. Her mother never remarried and her grandmother moved in to help her mother. Kate graduated from Australia's National Institute of Dramatic Art in 1992 and, in a little over a year, had won both critical and popular acclaim. On graduating from NIDA, she joined the Sydney Theatre Company's production of Carol Churchill's Top Girls, then played Felice Bauer, The Bride, in Tim Dolly's Kafka Dances, winning the 1993 Newcomer Award from the Sydney Theatre Critics Circle for her performance. From there, Blanchett moved to the role of Carol in David Mamet's searing polemic, Alina, also for the Sydney Theatre Company, and won the Rosemont Best Actress Award, her second award that year. She then co-starred in the ABC Television's primetime drama Heartland, 1994, again winning critical acclaim. In 1995, she was nominated for Best Female Performance for her role as Ophelia in the Belvoir Street Theatre Company's production of Hamlet. Other theater credits include Helen in the Sydney Theater Company's Sweet Phoebe, Miranda in The Tempest, and Rose in The Blind Giant is Dancing, both for the Belvoir Street Theater Company. In other television roles, Blanchett starred as Bianca in ABC's Border Town, 1995, as Janie Morris in GP, 1989, and in ABC's popular series Police Rescue, 1994. She made her feature film debut in Paradise Road, 1997. Kate married writer Andrew Upton in 1997. She had met him a year earlier on a movie set, and they didn't like each other at first. He thought she was aloof, and she thought he was arrogant, but then they connected over a poker game at a party, and she went home with him that night. Three weeks later, he proposed marriage and they quickly married before she went off to England to play her breakthrough role in films, the title character in Elizabeth. 1998, for which she won numerous awards for her performance, including the Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Drama. Kate was also nominated for an Academy Award for the role, but lost out to Gwyneth Paltrow. 2001 was a particularly busy year, with starring roles in Bandits, 2001, The Shipping News, 2001, Charlotte Grey, 2001, and playing Elf Queen Galadriel in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. She also gave birth to her first child, son Dashiell, in 2001. In 2004, she gave birth to her second son Roman. Also, in 2004, she played actress Catherine Hepburn in Martin Scorsese's film The Aviator, 2004, for which she received an Academy Award as Best Supporting Actress. Two years later, she received an Academy Award nomination as Best Supporting Actress for playing a teacher having an affair with an underage student, in Notes on a Scandal, 2006. In 2007, she returned to the role that made her a star in Elizabeth, The Golden Age, 2007. It earned her an Oscar nomination as Best Actress. She was nominated for another Oscar that same year, as Best Supporting Actress for playing Bob Dylan in I'm Not There, 2007. In 2008, she gave birth to her third child, son Ignatius. She and her husband became artistic directors of the Sydney Theatre Company, choosing to spend more time in Australia raising their three sons. She also purchased a multi-million dollar home in Sydney, Australia and named it Bulwara, and made extensive renovations to it. Because of her life in Australia, her film work became sporadic, until Woody Allen cast her in the title role in Blue Jasmine, 2013, which won her the Academy Award as Best Actress. She ended her job as artistic director of the Sydney Theatre Company, 
while her husband continued there for two more years before he to resigned. In 2015, she adopted her daughter Edith in her father's homeland of the United States. That same year, she and her husband sold their multi-million dollar home in Australia at a profit and moved to America. Reasons varied from her wanting to work more in America to wanting to familiarize herself with her late father's American heritage. She played the title role of Carol, 2015, a 1950s American housewife, in a lesbian affair with a younger woman, for which she received an Oscar nomination as Best Actress. While most actresses might slow down in their 40s, Blanchett did the opposite by stretching her boundaries even further, such as when she played 13 different characters, in Manifesto, 2015, and then making her Broadway debut in 2017 in The Present which is her husband's adaptation of Chekhov's play Platana for which she earned a Tony nomination as Best Actress in a Play. Also in 2017, she was selected for the highest honor in her birth country, the Companion of the Order of Australia, A.C. Family, Spouse, Andrew Upton, December, the 29th, 1997, Present, Four Children, Children, Edith Vivian Patricia Upton, Roman Robert Upton, Ignatius Martin Upton, Dashiell John Upton, Parents, June Gamble, Robert DeWitt Blanchett Jr. Relatives, Bob Blanchett, Sibling, Genevieve Blanchett, Sibling, Trademarks, Blonde Hair and Blue Eyes, Highly Defined Cheekbones, Deep Wise Voice. Trivia By winning the Oscar for her portrayal of Katherine Hepburn, she became the first person to give an Oscar-winning portrayal of a previous Oscar winner. In an interview she gave to Fox Television Network, she admitted blushingly that she had accepted the role of Galadriel, the Elf Queen in the Lord of the Rings trilogy because she always wanted to appear in a movie wearing pointed ears. After completing work on the Lord of the Rings trilogy in the role of Galadriel, she kept and bronzed her elf for prosthetics. Is only the sixth actress to win both leading and supporting actress Oscars? The other five are Maggie Smith, Meryl Streep, Jessica Lange, Helen Hayes and Ingrid Bergman, holds the record as the only Australian actress to win two Academy Awards. In 2008, Although she was nominated for a Best Actress Oscar for her performance in Elizabeth, The Golden Age, 2007, she publicly declared that she had voted for Marion Cotillard in La Vienne Rose, 2007, and described her performance as Edith Piaf as astonishing and inspiring. When Cotillard was announced as the winner, Blanchett was visibly happy for her win. In 2012, Blanchett wrote an op-ed for Variety praising Cotillard's performance in Rust and Bone. 2012, adopted her fourth child, a daughter named Edith Vivian Patricia Upton on March 6, 2015, with her husband Andrew Upton, holds the record for largest, best actress, award sweep, 42 wins, for her performance as Jasmine French in Blue Jasmine, 2013, followed by Helen Mirren, 40 wins, for her performance as Queen Elizabeth II in The Queen, 2006, and Natalie Portman, 38 wins, for her performance as Nina Sayers in Black Swan, 2010. She said the pronunciation of her last name accustomed to is, Blanchett, as opposed to, Blanchett. Her father, Robert Blanchett, a Texan advertising executive, died of a heart attack, when she was 10 years old. When she was age 18, Kate was on vacation in Egypt. A fellow guest at a cheap hotel, in Cairo asked if she wanted to be an extra in a movie, the Egyptian boxing movie Kaboria. 1990, Crabs, 1990, directed by Carrie Bishara. She appeared in three scenes in that movie. In one of them, she was dancing to the main song of the movie, Good Friends with actress Nicole Kidman and Tony Collette. Along with Sir Ian McKellen, she is one of only two actors to appear in all six of Sir Peter Jackson's Middle Earth films, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, 2001, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, 2002, the Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, 2003, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, 2012, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog, 2013, and The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, 2014, gave birth to her third child at age 38, a son named Ignatius Martin Upton on April 23, 2008. Child's father is her husband, Andrew Upton shaved her head at age 15 and as a result was almost fired from her job at a nursing home. Her portrayal of Irina Spolko in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, 2008, is director Steven Spielberg's favorite villain in the Indiana Jones series. She appeared in 10 films nominated for the Best Picture Academy Award, four of them in a row, Elizabeth, 1998, The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, 2001, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, 2002, 
The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, 2003, The Aviator, 2004, Babel, 2006, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, 2008, Don't Look Up, 2021, Nightmare Alley, 2021, and Tar, 2022. She was on set for only eight days to shoot her scenes for The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, 2012, and the two follow-ups. Enjoys making lists and crossing items off as she accomplishes them. Quotes. If you know you are going to fail, then fail gloriously. When asked what color her hair is, look, it's one of the great mysteries of the world. I cannot answer that question. I think I'm vaguely blonde. To be perfectly frank, I don't know. When asked if she has ever appeared in Neighbors, 1985, absolutely not. I'm an actress, on the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I had never done anything with blue screen before, or prosthetics, or anything like that. Lord of the Rings was like stepping into a video game for me. It was another world completely. But, to be honest, I basically did it so that I could have the ears. I thought they would really work with my bare head. If I had my way, if I was lucky enough, if I could be on the brink my entire life, that great sense of expectation and excitement without the disappointment, that would be the perfect state. It's part of my job. You can't play Veronica Guerin, puts on heavy strain sounding like this. It just wouldn't wash. But what I find fascinating about doing an accent, unless it's a farce, is that it's not slapped on, on doing many accents, on working with Ron Howard in The Missing, 2003. I loved making it. I had a ball, cowboys and Indians. This is the thing. I loved doing things which I'd never envisaged before. And so getting me on the back of a horse, with Tommy Lee Jones and shooting guns and chasing Indians, it's just not something that I would have expected myself to be doing. The more you do it, the more you learn to concentrate, as a child does, incredibly intensively and then you sort of have to relax. I remember the first film I did, the lead actor would in between scenes be reading a newspaper, or sleeping and I'd think, how can you do that? SAG acceptance speech February the 5th, 2005, thank you. I so didn't expected this. I wore a really tight dress that's, very ungracious walking up those stairs. Thank you very much. I sort of don't know, where to begin. Playing Catherine Hepburn, I absolutely did not expect to be standing here in front of you all. But Hepburn aside, I actually would like to say, as an actor coming from another country to this country, I am so astounded and amazed, and grateful, at the power of the SAG Union, and what it does for its members. And I hope that other countries, mine own included, you know, is inspired by that. I think it's incredible, on the pressures women face regarding plastic surgery, it's not just women on film. 18-year-old girls feel pressure to do preventative injecting. I see someone's face, someone's body who did children, and I think they're the song lines of your experience, and why would you want to eradicate that? I look at people sort of entombing themselves, and all you see is their little pinholes of terror and you think, just live your life. Death is not going to be any easier just because your face can't move. I'm one of those strange beasts who really likes a corset. You know, when you see yourself on a big screen, I tend to watch from behind my hands. There is absolutely the regret. You always get that at the end of every project. That's what's great about theater. At least every night you get the chance to go out and ray offend. I'm endlessly disappointed, which is what propels me into the next project, probably. Not to repair the damage but to kind of hopefully keep developing. Otherwise there's no reason to keep doing it, is there? There's this sense that of course you want to be famous. When you're a performer, of course you want an audience. But it's very very different from courting fame. On her first Oscar loss, in 1999, sometimes I think it's so good not to win those things. And, anyway, who wants to peak when they're 28? Of course one worries about getting older, we're all fearful of death, let's not kid ourselves. I'm simply not panicking as my laugh lines grow deeper. Who wants a face with no history, no sense of humor? Don't you think like most things, like comedy, like sex, like anything, it's about timing, I think. My husband and I, collided with each other at what turned out to be the perfect time. We knew each other socially and we didn't get on and we played poker one night and I don't know, how we ended up kissing, but we did and he asked me to marry him about three weeks later, and we got together in the same spirit. Maybe I've got a lack of consequence, a healthy lack of consequence. In 2012, on collaborating with husband Andrew Upton, we've had some doozies and we've had some stinkers. No one sets out to have a stinker. I have, this strange, probably unachievable fantasy about performing in German in Berlin. But, I don't speak German. On being directed by Woody Allen in Blue Jasmine, 2013, I found him forthcoming, generous and refreshingly honest.
can be brutal when people are honest, but I much prefer to know if it's not working, because you can do something with it, rather than people, who go, oh, we'll fix it up in post, production. There is no post in a Woody Allen movie. If it doesn't happen then, it doesn't happen at all. I love Brighton. We lived in Loose Crescent, and it was the genesis of the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland. So magical. No one is ever who they purport to be. And I suppose I'm most interested in the gap between who we project socially, and who we really are. I don't know if I ever really wanted to be an actor. I'm an active person. The thought of waiting for the phone to ring wasn't something that sat happily with me. But I kept doing it, trying not to do it, and then doing it. I can be a real pessimist. You know that, when you win an Oscar and you walk off stage, and your first thought is, oh God, I've peaked. I've done a lot of talking over the past six years. My husband and I have been running the Sydney Theatre Company, and it's been magic. My kids have been able to see so many of those transient moments, between acting and real life behind the scenes. But now that I've given it up I'm looking forward to being a bit quieter. I'm very conscious of that. There have been times when I've heard myself in the past and thought, oh, just shut up. You don't ever really get to know Woody Allen. He's not the sort of person where you can knock on his door and say, I've got this really interesting idea. You just have to hope that he's written your name on a little scrap of paper somewhere and that one day, he will call and say, I've got a script I want you to read. Working with Woody, Allen, is like an emotional strip club without the cash, on winning her second Oscar, for Blue Jasmine, 2013. Sit down, you're too old to be standing. Thank you, Mr. Day Lewis, from you. It exacerbates this honor too and it blows it right out of the ballpark. Thank you so much to the Academy. As random and as subjective as this award is, it means a great deal in a year of extraordinary, yet again, extraordinary performances by women. Amy Adams, everything you do, but your performance in American Hustle blew my mind. And Meryl, what can I say? Sandra, Bullock, I could watch that performance to the end of time, and I sort of felt like I had. Julia, Roberts, Pound Suck It. You know what I mean? And Judy Dench, I mean, what a career. She's not here tonight because at the age of 79, her film was so successful that she's in India doing a sequel. I mean what a career that is, if I could hope. And me, I'm here accepting an award in an extraordinary screenplay by Woody Allen. Thank you so much, Woody, for casting me. I truly appreciate it. I'm so very proud that Blue Jasmine stayed in the cinemas for as long as it did. And thank you to Sony Classics, to Michael and Tom for their extraordinary support, for so bravely and intelligently distributing the film and to the audiences who went to see it, and perhaps those of us in the industry, who are still foolishly clinging to the idea that female films, with women at the center are niche experiences. They are not. Audiences want to see them and, in fact, they earn money. The world is round, people. Thank you to my mom, to my sister, to my brother, to my three glorious sons. I would not be standing here without you. To my husband, Andrew, you are a legend. Thank you to my agent, Halda Quealy, you're behind the pillar somewhere up there. You are a goddess. To my agent in Australia, Robin Gardner, I love you so very much. To my publicist Lisa Kassler, to the sublime Sally Hawkins, and to the extraordinary cast of Blue Jasmine. I don't know how to do this without other actors, and this I share with you. To the hair and makeup people who sweat ed me up and tried to make me look attractive. Thank you for the attempt. To Carla Meyer for getting Sally and I together and for incredible support. To Helen Robin, to everyone involved in Blue Jasmine, I thank you so much. And finally, I would like to thank every single member of the Sydney Theatre Company, one of the great theatre companies in the world. For me, working on Blue Jasmine, it was a real synthesis of my work in the theatre and on film. And not only working with you, for the last six years has been the most enormous privilege of my career, but it's made me a better actress. There is so much talent in Australia and Michael Wilkinson and CM, and I are just Tonight's tip of the iceberg. Thank you so much. Thank you. Salaries. Hannah. 2011, seven million dollars. Robin Hood, 2010, ten million dollars. Little Fish, 2005, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars.